Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a very important aspect of the geography of Atlantis, and which can be really captured in this single quote that I, that I have on the screen. And that is that the capital city of Atlantis was located on a plain, and this plain was surrounded by mountains, and the mountains descended to the sea. Now, this isn't the actual exact quote from the Dialogues of Plato, but it's just kind of like a, a, a paraphrasing of that exact quote. The precise quote that Plato provides is as follows. The country immediately about and surrounding the city was a level plain, itself surrounded by mountains which descended towards the sea. As you can see, this is uh, this kind of concept of the plane is really the key facts are described in this quote. And this this is kind of describing the plane in more detail, but that's not really as important as the fact to, is to understand that this plane was very, very large. It was around 300 miles in one direction and 200 miles in the other. And the conversion units for stadia to miles is 8.8 .8 stadia per mile. So divided by around 10 more or less, and you got the you got the desired quantity in miles. And so, first of all, the question is why is the plane so important? Because there are many details that are provided in Plato's dialogues, of which the plane is only a single one of them. So why why create a video just focusing on the plane, which is just one part of the description of Atlantis? And the answer is. Because we know that Atlantis is destroyed now, it's going to be a given that the, the part that Atlantis is going to look significantly differently now than it did in the past because it underwent such a terrible disaster that caused all of its inhabitants to basically perish overnight. And so many things are going to be changed with respect to Atlantis and its and its many particulars. So we, we want to look at things that we that have the lowest probability of having undergone a change that would make it unrecognizable after the disaster. And what uh, what is a better candidate for one of those unchanging in I, I call them in math we have this concept called invariance. Certain things that are left unchanged under a particular transformation. And so the transformation of Atlantis from a island where people were living on it to a place where everyone was dead due to a natural disaster, there has to be some aspects of that island that have, that have been relatively unchanged. And the likelihood of a 300 mile by 200 mile plane is probably one of the best candidates for um, having been unchanged through that disaster. So that's why I think it's important to focus on the plane. It is likely that that plane can still be identified and recognized even 10,000 years after a massive destruction that befell it. And so with that in mind, let's, let's imagine what could this plane possibly look like before it was destroyed. What, what, what could possibly these mountains and the city which descended toward the, the mountains which descended toward the sea, the, the level plains surrounding the city? This is how I imagine it. it. It's pretty clear from the description what it could possibly be. And it would look something like this. You have the city that's situated on a plain and you have mountains surrounding that plain and the mountains descend toward the sea but there's only one problem there's one major problem with this this kind of configuration of Atlantis for Atlantis to have actually gone underwater this entire stretch of land this entire area of land which is 300 or 200 miles wide would have had to just collapse vertically by a significant amount. 
And the problem is that kind of process in which that amount, a land that size sinks vertically, we just don't have any evidence of that ever happening in the 4.6 billion years of history that we know of. And maybe we've missed something, right? Maybe things like this do happen, but but we don't have a theory that accounts for that. And it doesn't make sense to like invent theories because of one specific example of a ancient text that mentions the possibility of such an event happening. We shouldn't really... Um, that's kind of going too far in a sense. But this isn't the only way that Atlantis could be could be configured in terms of its geography. Let's look at another alternative. We have the same quote, and now we have this picture. What's different about it? You have the sea, you have the mountains as before, but here the plain of Atlantis actually is located extremely far down. It's located extremely deep, unlike the other other picture where the plain was higher than the sea. Here the plain is lower than the sea. And what is different about this that makes this a more attractive candidate for the actual geography of Atlantis is that it doesn't require this entire stretch of land to have collapsed in order for this city and, this, and Atlantis itself, the plain of Atlantis, to have become submerged. All that is required is for these mountains at some point to collapse. And imagine that there was a conduit that formed from the sea into this plain area. Some crack or some weakness in the rock that formed that allowed the waters to start pouring through this conduit into the plain. And because you have the entire weight of the world's oceans just pushing through this, that's going to create a unstoppable flow of water that ultimately ends up naturally being pulled down under the influence of gravity and ultimately filling up this, this region. And so the advantage of this geographical configuration of Atlantis is that it provides a natural mechanism for its own destruction, whereas this configuration requires a very unnatural, unprecedented collapse of this entire landmass, whereas the other theory requires the collapse of only a small portion, a tiny portion of the surrounding mountains for the city of Atlantis to actually have become submerged. Because and the key difference is that here, before the cataclysm that befell Atlantis, this city was actually situated above sea level by this much, whereas in this configuration, the city of Atlantis was situated below sea level, not just after its destruction, but before. Again, the advantage of the description that, that Plato provided of the city allows for two distinct geographical configurations of the city of Atlantis and the one in which the plain and the city are already situated below sea level is more attractive because it provides a natural mechanism for its own destruction. Now the question that follows is where are some possible candidates for such a geographical configuration that exists and can be identified across the world today. And I will be discussing that in future videos. And I already have touched upon it in, uh, in previous videos.